sie so. The Combat Cast, Episode 9, The Ketogenic Diet for Combat Sports Performance. And we are live. Hello and welcome to The Combat Cast, Episode number 9. Uh, today I am joined with a very special guest. His name is House. And House is uh, the owner of a company that specializes in um, all natural personal care products. Um, but more importantly, and the reason why I've got him on the show today is because he is um, <clears throat> somewhat of an expert on the ketogenic diet. Now, as a, um, you know, as a provider of content, it's really important to me that, again, that I provide you guys with um, you know, useful and knowledgeable content that's going to help you, um, you know, on your journey as a martial artist or if you're just a general user, you're just pr practicing and training, maybe you do have an office job that you have um, some information about different types of diets. Because I often get asked, you know, what is, what is the optimal diet for fighters or what is the optimal diet for performance, um, you know, being, being a health coach myself. So um, today I would like to give you guys some perspective and I would like to welcome House onto the show. Hey Steve, <laughs> thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your show. It's a pleasure bro, it's a pleasure. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's get things started. Um, I just want you to tell me about your self house and what led you into the ketogenic diet. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I, I, I started going to the gym since, I mean, I liked to do sports when I was young, but then I started getting serious to, to work out since 10, year, 10 years ago mm -hmm. because I feel like it really helped me with my studies yeah. So I always get into a bad habit if I don't watch my diet or if I don't work out in a good routine frequently. Let's say like every other day, like three days a week. And so ever since I was in college, since first year, I was going to the gym consistently. Mm. Even though during exam week, everyone is just you know locking themselves in studying for yeah. exam like i still have my time to go to the gym yeah um because i feel like maybe it, it maybe it's genetics or you know maybe it's whatever but i just feel that i function better if i am eating healthy and going to a gym like hitting the gym frequently and so when i started keto it was two years now so I started out keto two years now. My friend, I was in the U.S. I was traveling. My friend Jessica mm -hmm. told me that oh, there's this thing called the keto diet, and you just eat 80% fat. And before that, I was trying many different diets. So I started off with just you know, the usual high high protein, high carbs, low fat mm. diet, and I was training quite pretty intense but I was still like I was always the chubby person mm. and then I tried um, I was on in I was fasting intermittent fasting since 10 years ago as well mm -hmm. like when saw this guy Martin Burkham yeah Lean Gaines okay so he he was a guy that made IF popular. Okay. And then after that, I heard about keto and then I was really skeptical. But then by then, a lot of the stuff that I was skeptical about became like, became a mainstream lesson. Yeah. Like people, yeah. Like people a mainstream conception. Yeah. Or... People just, like for example, eating breakfast. Yeah. Like 10 years ago. You know, like when, when I was raised, my parents always tell me that breakfast, like all, everyone tells, tells you that breakfast is like the best, the, the most important thing. Mm. But then with, when I tried 
intermittent fasting at first, I feel like, okay, I have low energy because I didn't eat breakfast. Mm. But then I stuck to it for a while and then I just felt like I have better mental clarity. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so that was your first step, starting off with intermittent fasting. Yeah. And then everything kind of makes sense, you know, with keto. So I just like, I like to try many things. Mm. I like to try new things. And yeah. if there's like, like people online, like doctors or scientists doing it, then there might, you know, be some truth in it. Mm. So why not just try it out? So right. I tried it out for a, a month. Yeah. And then I felt better. Like the main point, apart from maybe body recomposition, yeah. is to have better energy. Yeah. Higher cognitive function. Yeah. And basically it's like being on keto, first you gotta be adapted first, right? Mm. But my first experience was it was okay the first week the second so week just pause there one second just tell everyone what is actually adapted so for those that have never heard of the keto diet before, yeah what would be what what is adapted so when you're starting out keto you gotta first do it for one month yeah i, I would recommend one at least one month straight mm -hmm. with no cheating yeah so that your body really understands that okay it doesn't going to be no glucose coming yep. into your body. Mm. So your, your body, the cells in your body start preferring fat. Right. So, so micro, mitochondria in their cells mm. start to prefer to yep. use ketones or um, yeah, ketone bodies like BHB mm. as fuel. Mm. Yeah. So mitochondria are cells in our body, for, for anyone that's never heard that word before, that basically convert fuel into energy or into ATP into our body. Yeah. So on a very like cellular level, so House just referenced that, getting those cells to basically respond to fat as, yeah. a, as a fuel source, right? Yeah. Interesting, man, cool. Sweet, so that's fat adapted. Yeah. So then you, you started to get fat adapted, you did that one month, yeah. and then did you go back to a normal diet again after that just to? I, I think I did it straight for two months, but then yep. I have, I had a one week break because okay. I was traveling somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And and then after that I was always on and off. Okay. So you could say that it's people say that it's cyclical ketogenic diet. Mm. So for example, five days, yeah. No harm in ketosis and then one or two days. Normal. Just carb, carb loading. Right. Or, or like whatever. Okay. That's interesting. So, would you say that's better than just being on keto all the time? So, basically, it's depending on your goal, right? Because I was mentioning this to you earlier that ketosis has been there for a long time. Yeah. And it was initially there for a patient who has epilepsy and mm. is not responding well to medicine. Yeah. So being in ketosis helps them prevent having these seizures or mm. any, like um, problems. So they also like the reason why there are supplements like MCT oils and yeah. you know all this keto supplements was for that as well. So mm. for the patient to be always in ketosis. And and then, but then, like, if you don't have a medical problem, then you want to do ketosis for cognitive function, yeah, or you want it for performance, or you yeah. want it to excel in certain sports, yes, and different types of sports like that requires more explosive, like mm. um, possible creatine, yeah, or like anaerobic or aerobic, yeah. So it's just depends on your goal, right. but with cyclical ketogenic diet, it is better for athletes because right. maybe you need more explosive, maybe you need that glucose yeah. for 
a little break as well. Interesting. And then maybe you also have that part where you're just, for example, a grappler or a yep. BJJ, you're just like more of an so endurance like, style fighter. Most of the time, it's yeah. Yeah. It's it's more aerobic. Yeah. Which your body would just use the energy from ketones. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. But for me, starting out was just having fun. Just having fun. Just testing out another diet. Right. Because, I mean, I heard about a lot so of So then things. after that time, you were just kind of on and off, on and off for quite a while. Like you mentioned, you kind of formed like a cyclical type routine. Yeah. So you're just on this, this kind of like, yeah. kind of like waves of like ketosis, yeah. carbohydrate. I mean, before that, I was doing high protein, good carb, very clean, yeah. low fat. Mm. Didn't, didn't work well. Okay. Me. I feel like it's very hard for me to maintain. Yes. I feel like I crave a lot right. of food and I was training pretty hard on it and still I didn't get leaner. Mm. Like back then my goal was to be, be in shape. Right. And then, because I was always, genetically, I was always chubby. Right. Like with the genetic test, 23andMe test, yeah. it said that I have 2.7 fold increased chance of obesity. Right. So, like, <laughs> I, I mean, like, when I was young, I go to school, like we have lunch break with our friends and then we eat the same amount of food and yeah. then I was always like a little bit chubby. And everyone else would just be kind of, yeah. you know, somewhat normal. Yeah. Right, so this has been kind of like a personal mission for you as well. Yeah. To really kind of like hack your body yeah. through diet and yeah. nutrition to see what is going to optimally work for yeah. you, right? Because apparently the, the usual understanding of you know, work hard, like calories in, calories out, didn't really work for me. Right. And what keto really helped was um, the, the not calories in, calories out, because I was doing that ever since before. Yeah. But I think for me it was normalizing my insulin. Okay. Because I think I have insulin resistant. Okay. Just many years of eating a lot of sugar. <laughs> yeah. I mean like in Thailand, there's sugar it's everywhere. Yeah, a lot of sugar in Thailand. So I was raised with, you know, just being used to eating a lot of sugar, mm. processed sugar, processed food, Thai food, Thai yeah. sweet food. I mean, diabetes yeah. uh, type two is quite uh, prominent here, isn't it? Yeah. In Thailand. Yeah. Especially in like, you know, people in their like kind of 50s. Yeah, older people. Yeah, it's quite, quite common. So I just feel like keto really helps bring back my insulin function. Okay. So a lot of sugar, lack of sleep. Yeah. Because I was working out a lot. I, I mean, I was working a lot. Mm. Back then I was working. I, in school, I was not having enough sleep, like less than six or seven hours. A lot of stress. Um, not, I guess not eating not eating enough protein or nutrition. Yeah. And so basically I had insulin resistant, which means that I'm so, my body's so used to having a lot of sugar. Yeah. So they're waiting for a lot of sugar. Yeah. So that they'll release the insulin so that the insulin takes the sugar and yeah. burns it or like store it, it into muscle, into yeah. glycogen. But because my insulin is kind of fucked up, it's resistant, so even if I eat rice, it will still not come out because it's waiting for a lot of sugar. Mm. And so even back then, I was gaining weight so quickly. Like a weekend of just going out and just eating normal, like Thai food, mm. Thai seafood, mm. I would gain some fat. Wow. Yeah. And so just staying out of you know, sugar, like not drinking, not eating any sugar, mm. already helped me. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I saw a, a post recently, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but they were talking about how, um, you know, fat and protein is, um, or are essential nutrients, but carbohydrates aren't. Um, what do you, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Like, um, I would say that I, I kind of agree with that, but not proven. 
yeah. but then because there's this thing called gluconeogenesis mm -hmm. that it's a process when you convert protein into glucose right so so like there's a few parts of your body that requires glucose like your right. brain or some like your liver yeah and if your body really needs it it will just convert protein mm. into glucose right and it will also store it into your muscle as well wow if you're fat adapted interesting yeah. right okay so i just want to bring it back to you again um just to keep it on topic so if we fast forward how long ago was it that you were introduced to this diet? That your friend Jessica introduced you to the ketogenic diet? How long ago was that? Two years. Two years. So since then you've been on this kind of like ketogenic journey. And if you look back on that time and you compare yourself to, to now, um, how do you feel like in terms of like differences and like and just how you are, your physique, your performance in terms of like training and things like that? Yeah. So I would just talk more about what happened in the first year, I'll just separate sure. it into two years. Sure. So the first year I I was eating 80% fat. Yeah. Because that's the understanding that I had. So I was eating more fat, I was supplementing with MCT oil, I yeah. was drinking coconut oil, I was having certain fat bombs like avocado with you know I was trying to put in fat into my diet. Yeah. And I was also not eating a lot of protein maybe 100 grams of okay. protein. But I was training a lot. I was training high intensity. I was training functional workout. Yep. So more like high intensity, functional, with weights. Yep. So not like high intensity, but cardio only, but with weights. Right. I was gaining a lot of muscle. Okay. And, but I was not focused on weight lifting. Yep. And at one point, you know, when I was training, like I would get up to like an hour and 10 minutes of high intensity training. Right. But with the heart rate monitor. Yeah. So it would look like excluding warm up, which is like an hour and 10 minutes. Like that's like at one point I would just do that three times a week. Wow. And it would go up like, you know, when you do high intensity workout, yeah. you get your heart rate up to 90%. Yeah. And then down to like 70%. Yeah. Some people were even lower, depending yeah. on their cardiac agility. Yeah, so like, just like, for me, just looking at the heart rate, 90%, mm. stay there for a few seconds, and then rest, go down, Yeah. 70%. And then, so the heart rate percentage is calculated on your, your age, your BMI, your mm. gender. Yeah. Yeah, so it really, I saw a big improvement. I was really surprised. That was my first year. Right. I was really surprised with my endurance with high intensity workout. That I could, at one point, I would just go autopilot. Right. My, my brain would be fine and I would just be able to do it. I would wow. just keep on going. But when I was on carbs, I could only do it for like 20 minutes okay. and I would be super tired. And then at one point, my body would just, my brain would just shut down. Mm. But then with I, yeah, with, so this is the first year, and then after that, I I was you know I was looking at myself, and then my cardio is good, my performance is good, but I'm not my body is not looking better. Right. So your body still wasn't quite from an aesthetic standpoint where you wanted it to. Yeah. Be. So I realized that I'm. I'm doing too much high intensity training. Yeah. And I was burning a lot of muscle because I was doing the, you know, my, uh, my earlier understanding of the keto diet was 80% mm. fat, only a little bit of protein. Right. And so basically not enough and I was doing way too much cardio. Yeah. So this year I, I changed everything. So it was three months of three, four months of just weightlifting, mm. no cardio. And also this year, like, I mean, end of so last you train, year. So you changed your, your training routine to be a little, little bit more focused around strength training. 
Yeah. Like pure for three months. Yeah, okay, uh, like for three months. January, okay. December, January, Feb, March. Mm. Supersets, so I still have some cardio yeah. because it was supersets. Supersets, yeah. right, okay, cool. And basically just... You gotta get your high intensity fixed, don't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, it's still pretty high intensity. It yeah. gets me like super tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would work out for like... five days a week. Mm. It was pretty intense, but then I also saw other areas in my life that I had to fix, like sleep. Mm. So I prioritize sleeping. I mm -hmm. have a sleep tracker, and I try to sleep more than eight hours mm. per day. And I realized that this is also another game changer because last, last few years I was neglecting my sleep. Mm. And, um, but in terms of the diet itself. So just getting that adequate sleep in, do you also feel like that helped you a lot as well? Yeah, that's like the, the really, one of the biggest thing right. that helped me. Interesting. One of the biggest, one wow. of the main thing. Yeah. It's like part of the puzzle. Mm. And because before I would always be like, I don't want to feel unproductive. So I would give myself seven and a half hours. Right. So I would go to bed and I would put on the timer, so the alarm for seven and, and, and a half hours. hours. Right. Which no, now when I start tracking my sleep, it takes me like an hour to fall asleep. And during the, the sleep, the night, sometimes I wake up yeah. unconsciously. Yeah. I don't know about it, but the and I think I, I think a lot of people out there they would probably relate to this as well. Yeah. You know, not everyone has just a straight yeah. seven hours of deep sleep. They're going to be waking up. Yeah. They're going to be tossing and turning. Maybe they got like some random shoulder pain or yeah. something. They just wake up. You know, yeah. so we don't just sleep straight for no. seven hours. So, sorry, continue. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the reason why I think that it's quite accurate is because I I test out putting earplugs, putting masks. I made the curtain completely pissed back. Mm. So if you look at this. With your hand, yeah, and now you can't see it, right? And it kind of improves my sleep. So just having right. like absolute I don't wake darkness, up more. yeah, and then just like putting because normally I feel like it's pretty silent outside, but then I guess every once in a while there'll be like mm, something mm, random, a car, like, mm, yeah, which will wake you up, but you would never, you will not understand, yeah, you you won't know it, and I think also my like my nose. You know, I have hard times breathing from my nose. Yeah. So that, that might also be a, another reason. Interesting. I still figure out what, how, how to fix that. Mm. And right. So would you, would you start like breathing more through your nose? Yeah. Just like tongue posture. Yeah. And just biting when working out, just like biting and breathing on the nose. Right. Putting the pressure on the jaw. Yeah. There's, there's a book, it's called Oxygen Advantage, yeah. um, and they talk a lot about nasal breathing and the benefits of that in terms of helping us to relax and to engage our parasympathetic nervous system, yeah. which really helps our body to recover. And um, also in terms of like just like breath holds and things like that, to like saturate your body with carbon dioxide and then yeah. train your body to like utilize the oxygen more effectively. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to that. That's like a whole other, yeah, other topic. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so, so you've just been on this journey, haven't you? Yeah. Of I mean, I, learning all these different things. Yeah, I mean, life I, hacks. I even tried that thing that you know you put in the the cranial, the balloon cranial adjustment. What's that? They put up a balloon into your nose and then it just oh. like cracks your skull. Really? <laughs> you tried it? It's really painful, but after. So it opens your nasal passageways. Yeah. Because basically, <laughs> I'm gonna do that, man. Your skull has like yeah. 22 bones, right? And then over here, it's a connection of around 18 bones, and so it just pops it, like you know, like when you go to a chiropractor and they yeah. crack your back, it cracks it, and they just crack the skull, crack it open. Because sometimes you get like smashed, or uh, you know, you have some concussion, just in life, like, yeah, or like, in combat sports, yeah. <laughs> so. But then, so you actually did that after a few months. It came back to it came back. Oh, okay. More. So I just so it was like, like a temporary fix. Yeah. I mean, the doctor said that you have to come like every couple months, and at one point it'll stay. 
but it's quite painful. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so for those people out there that may or not, or may or may not have broken their nose, or maybe they have what's called a deviated septum, so some people are just born with this, where their nose is kind of like, um, the, the passageway is not fully uh, straight, it's kind of crooked, and it inhibits their breathing through their nose. This could be yeah. something that you look into doing if you are struggling to breathe through your nose and you're not quite able to reap those benefits. I mean, obviously there's a lot of benefits as a fighter to be yeah. able to breathe just through your nose because you know, if you're breathing through your mouth and someone punches you, you can get your jaw broken and yeah. lots of different things. So yeah, interesting, right. I mean, just like, but then it's not a medical procedure, it's done by a chiropractor. Yeah. So like there's a lot of controversy right. with this. Interesting, so, so a chiropractor does this. <laughs> 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 this is like some type of like alchemy type yeah, yeah. stuff. So, so we're, we're going like into that, uncharted uh, territory here. <laughs> um, at your own risk. At your own risk. Yeah, interesting. But you found that it improved it for about three yeah, months? Yeah. Okay. So now sometimes I just use the tape. The tape? When I sleep. That's a tape that helps you help lift up your... To open your nose. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Help me. Yeah, but yeah, just... So this year I found out that sleep is very important. Okay. Because the deep sleep is when your body really recover. Yeah. And if you're working out a lot, then especially if you're doing a lot of high intensity work. Yeah. So I just want to reference this. So let's say, for example, to give you guys an example, you're smashing it all week. You're just absolutely caning it, and then you're looking at your body, and it's just it's just not changing. You know, it just looks kind of like almost a little bit flubby, not ripped, anything like that. And then you have like a full day's rest where you just like have really good deep quality sleep and then on the monday when you wake up you look at your body in the mirror and you're like holy shit i look jacked and that's that's kind of what we're referencing that's like the power of sleep you know you can be doing these killer workouts but if the rest isn't balancing out those high intensity bouts of training then your body's never able to fully recover and it's never able able to adapt to the stimulus that you're giving it so you've, you've just touched on a really yeah. cool point there because i I also found out that with the left, it's also genetic, but I found out about this on, on my genetic test that if I don't have enough sleep, then I have, I, I normally have a higher chance of being insulin resistant. So mm. the insulin would not work properly and it would store more fat. Right. Yeah, but I read that there's different people have different genetic makeup and some people can go well with little sleep right yeah okay so it's subjective to the individual but then it was like based on their genetics yeah and it's a big factor for my goal back then which is body recomposition because mm. i want to get leaner because i was eating really healthy working out a lot but still like having a lot of belly fat right so from an aesthetic standpoint you still yeah. weren't quite where you wanted to be and then i was getting injured quite often right because okay. I, I, I was doing a lot of, uh, too much cardio and high intensity okay. and just frequently getting injuries. Right. Same, probably not enough recovery, not enough yeah. sleep, not enough protein. Yeah. I was just forcing myself to. <laughs> yeah. So you're basically doing all of this super high intensity work on quite low risk yeah. and low protein as well. Yeah. Um, and pretty much purely just fat, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a good <laughs> case study. Yeah. But then I would, I would have, back then I would have one like weekends off, so, mm. but then I would get pretty adapted that, on, so weekend I would have carbs and then Monday and Tuesday I would already be in ketosis. Okay. Like the fastest would, would be Monday afternoon I would already be in ketosis. Right. Yeah, so I think that is like a really long time that helped me like probably the whole year, got me really adapted. Right. Fat adapted. Okay. And then this year, what I changed in terms of diet. Yeah. In terms of. So moving into the second year now. Yeah. So moving into the second year, I found out a few new information that when you first started out ketosis, when people talk about ketosis, there's a slight misconception to it mm. because when you first started out you have to eat 80% fat. Yeah. The reason, and, and try not to eat any carbs. Yeah. Because the reason why, and eat low protein as well. 
The reason why is because you want your body to be adapted. Mm. So you want to tell your cells, your body to be like, we're not going to get any glucose in here. Mm. So we've got to start utilizing the fat. Okay. And then what we look for in the blood test is we try to get really high ketone level. So when I first started out, people were saying that you should get into the optimal keto ketosis level, which is around 1.5 to 3 millimolars. Yeah. Millimolars? Millimolars. Oh, okay. Millimolars. Yeah. yeah. And I would, we would always like try to aim for that. Okay. But then what I've realized that if you're in ketosis for a long time, then your baseline ketone level in your blood will be lower because pretty it, it's the reason it's pretty obvious because you're using ketones mm. so there will not be a lot of ketones I body see. floating around your blood so right now when i test i would be around like 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 which is low but it shows that the mitochondria is much more efficient at you know it's preferring to use fat okay yeah and so what I will, what I, so that's like the misconception that once you're adapted, which will require you to be in ketosis yeah. or on and off for a while, and will also require you to train to work out in ketosis. In as ketosis, well. yeah. And then, and then once that happens, once you're adapted, you don't really. And, oh, another another misconception is you gotta eat less protein. Okay. And uh, because. If you, last year, I was, my understanding was if you eat too much protein, you, I would get kicked out of ketosis because right. of That glucose, conversion you're talking you know, about before, genesis, right? Yeah. Your body starts converting yeah. it into glucose. Okay, interesting. And then people would say that oh, then the glucose would go into your bloodstream and then mm. you know, kick you out of keto. But then that is, so that is not true as well. So I. I tested, I just went ahead and tested out. You increased your protein? I just increased my protein intake to like, in January, one month, one month straight, I ate like 400 grams of protein. Okay. From 100 grams of protein. Right. That's a huge jump up. Yeah. And so what's the percentage ratio now then? In back terms then, of in fat to protein? In January was, I didn't really care much about fat. Yeah. I just tried to hit 400 grams of protein and no carb. Mm. Yeah. Like, the only carb that I had was flax seed and chia seed. Okay. And some. And those veggies. are both quite high in fat too, though, aren't they? Yeah. And yeah, good fats, omega, mm. uh, omega 3, and yeah. with some kale and spinach. Right. Like, on, in the shake. Yeah. Apart from that, just meat, chicken, like all different types of meat for one month straight. I also stopped caffeine. I fixed my sleep. I was meditating because it helped, helped my sleep. That whole month, no alcohol. I saw a huge difference. I, it was the first time that I saw abs. Really? In my, in my like, after 10 years of training. Wow. It's like the first time. But I was training intensely as well, like five, yeah. five days a week. Wow. Ten, like 10, 10 exercise per session. Yeah. Super sets. Yeah. Were you still for focusing, so you're still focusing a bit more on strength or were you? Only straight, no cardio. Okay, but just super sets. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Pre really intense, like I would break it up, like I would have like around 10, so I would break it up into three sections, three exercise each. Yep. And then just First exercise, and then go to the second and third, mm. and then one minute rest, and then first, second, third, one minute rest for four sets. I see. And then move over, and then move over. Sessions around like an hour and 15 minutes. Right. Depending, or an hour and a half. Something. Interesting. So it's, it's pretty intense, but I saw results right away. And I, I think that it comes down to more recovery and more protein, which helps with recovery yep. as well. Right. So. Interesting. And then that made me realize that a lot of the wrong things that I had. So actually increasing that protein 
It didn't take you out of ketosis. Yeah. Right. So you're still technically on a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Just with an added amount of protein. Yeah. So in terms of like you know that eighty twenty balance from before. Yeah. What what would you say? Was sixty forty maybe? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Around like sixty forty depends. Okay. And or even fifty fifty depends. Okay. I see. But then definitely more towards like more protein. Okay. Like sixty forty. And it doesn't really matter if I. So sixty percent protein, forty yeah. percent fat. Uh, yeah. Oh. And basically just almost no carbs like. Right. Yeah. Okay. And how did you find that diet? How did, I mean, like you've, you've started talking about it, but I felt good. You, your physique obviously changed. Yeah. Like the first time I see abs, I gained right. the most muscle in a month. Yeah. Um, I was able to lift more. Right. Like from then till now, I lift more on all my weights for about like fifteen. Yeah. But just like just yeah, much more. Yeah, you lift a lot more. Yeah, and like in terms of your like, did you did you go back into any like high intensity, uh, and then like after, conditioning or circuits or anything like that? It was three months of just lifting, boring. Yeah, <laughs> weight lifting. I had to force myself. Yeah, like I, I I told my trainer that was with me for three years that okay. Cause he's a sports specific. He trains for a soccer player. Okay. And then I told him that you know it's just <laughs> it's gonna be a boring three months. Mm. But then we just gotta do it. And then January, March, April, and actually like three or four months, I I was I stuck to it for a while. And then I added in some low intensity cardio, so I would walk to the gym and then walk back. Okay. Saw big results. And then now, just from adding in that cardio, or just um, in the whole routine? The whole routine. Okay. And then, but now I, I'm back to doing, the last couple months, yeah. two, two, three months, I, I add in high intensity and right. my performance much better. Yeah. I adding more explosive, more yeah. like calisthenics moves. Yeah. And with the added muscle that I spent like three or four months, Building, yeah. I would a, I was able to do more, more stuff, more cool stuff, with calisthenics like right. pull ups. So you you had more power from that extra yeah. muscle mass that you were able to create, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, if any of you guys, if you if you haven't uh, if you don't know House, you're not familiar with him. Probably a lot of you aren't, but um, feel free to check out his Instagram. Uh, what's your, your it's Instagram? House underscore L. Okay, I'll put a tag up on the video, uh, so you guys can go and check it out. The man's crazy. He does a lot of freaking insane shit for high volume as well. So <laughs> it's like you see it once and you think, oh, that's cool. But then it does it like 10 more times and you're like, oh my God, when's he going to stop? Yeah. So feel free to go and check, check him out. Okay. Nice, bro. So what I want to, what I want to ask you now is, uh, why would this, why would the ketogenic diet or how could the keto ketogenic diet in your opinion be beneficial to, um, high performance athletes or you know, more specifically combat sports athletes. Yeah. Like what, so, what do you think about that? So like when we talk about ketogenic diet that would be beneficial to high performance athletes or a fighter, mm. you're, talk, you're more talking about targeted ketogenic diet. Yeah. So you will utilize, you know, ketogenic diet, it's just like another tool. It's like another tool in your arsenal. Yeah. Like, and then you're not, you don't have to be 100% of the time in ketosis. Right, like so, you were talking about before. Yeah. So you can use it to weight cut, or you can use it in certain, in certain aspects of your routine, right? Yeah. So the target, Once again, do you need to be fat adapted before yeah. you can start utilizing it? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's very tricky for a sports, um, for athletes right now, because you probably have to be in, a downtime, you know, when you're not efficient yeah. at using fat, and then you're yeah. not also, you're also like trying to force your body yeah. to have use the fat by not eating carbs. So, yeah. so um, we would say out of camp in the short, yeah, no, when you're out of camp, out of camp in the short off term, season. Like in off season, you can, yeah. and then it's also a risk that maybe some people are better off with fat or with carbs, right? right? Yeah. But then it's also very new, so not a lot of people like want to test or take that yes. risk on True. their athletes. Yeah. But from my experience, I see that 
you know, my performance clearly like in, improved a mm. lot. So if I'm an athlete, I probably like would perform much better. I see. And so basically the targeted ketogenic diet is when your body is in ketosis for a while and you're really adapted. So the general understanding is that first you burn, you don't eat any more glucose or carbs so you, and then you start burning all your glucose in your bloodstream. And then once that's done, then you burn the glucose in your glycogen store. Mm. So your muscle and your everywhere yeah. in your body. And then when that's happened, then you start tapping into the fat, right. into the fatty acids yeah. and into the ketones. Yes. But then that is true when you first started out, but when you're fat adapted, a very interesting thing happened because your body, your, the cells already start preferring the fat mm. and the ketones. So they will use that. Right. They already use that. But then when you're adapted, because of gluconeogenesis, you'll still store glucose. Mm. So like the glucose that you're eating from the veggies or like certain keto-friendly carbs. Yeah. Those, when you eat those, it will be stored as, when you're fat adapted, it will be stored into, the glucose will be stored into the glycogen store. Right. So, which I also saw physically on my body when I first started out keto, I was really lean and really like dry because there's no water in my muscle because there's mm. no glycogen. Yeah. But now, I still feel like I carry those weights. Right. You and still feel like you have that glycogen that full there. effect in my in the muscle mm. that which is most likely that, that glycogen in there. Right. So when I'm adapted, I still store the glycogen in my muscle. Yeah. This is this is where it gets interesting because so you still you still have glucose, but your your cell the mitochondria start preferring fat. Yes. So let's say you're just jogging, or like let's say you're a grappler. Yeah. You're just rolling, and then you have. It's basically just like, let's say seventy percent intensity. You know, mm. low intensity cardio, like just cardio. So it's tap. You're using you're using the ketone. And you're using yeah. the fatty acid as fuel. And then once it gets intense, when, once you're going in for the, you know, you're for the submission. Take down or submission. Yeah, and and yeah. becomes more like, you can, you can use the glucose in your glycogen right away. Mm. So it, you utilize a different um, energy source. Yeah, instead depending of, on what your yeah. requirements are. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's pretty cool because for me, predominantly, I was doing high intensity workout. Right. And then, at one point, I just didn't really care if ketosis is good or bad, because I'm not really competing. Yeah. I was just doing it for the sake of yeah. my workout. Yeah. And for the sake of being more intense in my yeah. workout. Yeah, yeah, and, and then I just never really expected I would get adapted like this. And then this year, adding more protein and you know like having that protein and then not eating carbs and then sometimes also having carb reloads and then with my body being more adapted it gets stored into the glycogen sometimes if needed the protein also get converted into mm. glucose and then i feel like I, people say that this is called fat dual fuel yeah so you have both sources mm. and there's also some scientists that claim that they see ketones as the fourth macronutrient right it's because some of the wow. muscle skeletal muscle cells they sometimes prefer fatty acid or sometimes they might prefer ketones and the main the most researched ketone body is beta hydroxyl butyrate bhb mm. BHP. But that's like only one. Right. And there's other as well. Okay. That is not fully researched yet. I see. Yeah. Interesting. So what I want to ask you next, House, is if someone is um, thinking about giving this diet a go for sports performance, 
let's say they're off camp, they don't, they don't have a fight coming up or you know, not for a long time, um, how would you recommend that they integrate this diet um, into their training and then, and then op optimally work it as well for perform from a performance aspect? I feel like if you're a high performance athlete, then at some at a certain time of your training routine, you're already in ketosis. You've had ketosis, ketones before. Like for example, when you're, let's say you're a soccer player and then you're just like running for like 90 minutes in the game and you've already completely run out of your carbs, mm. ate all your carbs already and then and then your body will just automatically start using fat. But then, right. Like probably like a lot of that many like months and months of that, then you know your body will be able to like create ketones already. Or like when you're cutting cutting weight and you're yep. fasting, you know, already you're already low carbohydrate like, yeah, and diet. You're already like making ketones. But for if you're off camp and you want to try this out, then to optimize it. Yeah, just make sure that don't worry about like the usual keto ketosis definition of 80% fat, you can eat high protein. You can eat 50, 50, 60, 40, 60 percent of protein and 40 grams of fat. Mm. Like, and also at one point when you're adapted, you don't need to add more fat. Right. Because your body has fat. I see. That's what I learned as well this year, that you don't need to take MCT oil or you know, drink more coconut oil. Mm. Your body already has fat, you don't need to eat more fat. Right. And so once you like, let's say you do like at least a month, maybe the first month you gotta eat some fat, right? But then once your body is adapted, you can try to add carbs to it. Right. So on like one or two days a week, you yeah. add in those carbs. Yeah. So like, let's say, and on those days, like, like how much carbs are we talking about? So let's say just like a normal, like what right would before, be before a normal day yeah. of eating? I mean, right before, like. This scientist, Peter Atia, he does endurance um, triathlon, so he would... Is he the person that just got the record, or who is that? I'm not sure. You know, okay. Yeah. Is that... Not the carnivore guy. Yeah, right? the, yeah. the carnivore guy is Sean Baker. Okay. He just got the record, right? Rolling. What's that, sorry? What record? I think there was... Uh, someone just told me about it, that he got the world record for... Rolling? Or like... I think it was like for triathlon, maybe or something like that. Yeah, it was sure. some endurance sport. Okay, that's right. Yeah, but it's it's like Peter Atia is also he, he talks a lot about ketosis, and it's also a very good source for information. Mm. I would recommend anyone interested. But he would do endurance sports, and then he would take like fifty to hundred grams of starchy supplement, just like this. Could be anything in the starch, like high glycemic stuff. Yeah. Carbohydrate source. Yeah. And just so you're in like no no carb, you're in ketosis, and then once you're gonna compete or you're gonna he'll do take this that, workout, that sugar. he'll just take that. Right. The and carbohydrate. Then it'll get burned towards the end of your workout, it will already finish out that carbohydrate. I see. And so you will have that carbohydrate that you just ate, it'll be already in your glycogen stores. Yeah. And then you also use fat. Right. Like ketones. I see. So you're using multiple fuel sources. It's just like yeah. another tool in your arsenal. Yeah. Like when you're doing low intensity, it's your ketone and your fat. Mm. When you're doing more explosive, then it's your, it's your glycogen mm. in your muscle. So just to summarize, you would say if they're just starting out, maybe they're in off camp, one month, the first month, they just um, focus on becoming more fat adapted yeah. um, by you know maybe having a little bit higher fat in that first month. Yeah. And then after that, they can start to reintegrate carbohydrates back into their diet yeah. one or two days a week. And then if there was like a specific um, you know, uh, time or event that they needed to have optimal performance, then they would like have some like uh, carbohydrates yeah like directly before that yeah. and then go into like competition or yeah. whatever it may be so yeah. that they're pulling from multiple fuel sources. Yeah. So wow, just like when you, yeah, when you first started out the first few days, just make sure not to, just fast it in the morning, do a low intensity cardio. Mm. 
you could grab an audio book or something. Yeah. Like grab your phone and just like go cardio for like two hours. Right. And just so you just know, get your your body used to burning fat, basically. Just, yeah. Yeah, but basically the first few days you just burn out all the glucose. Okay. And your glycogen and everything. Everything. Just like fasted workout. Yeah. Um, low intensity because you're trying to. You don't yeah. want to get the 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 sugar. The, yeah, the glucose into your bloodstream. Yeah. I usually want to slowly burn it out. Slowly yeah. flush it out. For the, the first few days. And then your body will be like, okay, I gotta start using ketones. So then it also reduces your uh, probability of getting ke ke the keto flu. Mm. So the keto flu is that you, like when you're starting out, you don't, you don't feel good. Right. And it's mainly because your, your, your body hasn't started producing ketones. Maybe you haven't worked out or you haven't put out all the glucose. Mm. Make sure you ha eat a lot of salt, sodium, salt, yep. potassium, magnesium, because okay. when you first burn out all the glucose and your body doesn't retrain, retain any water, mm. so with the sodium and all that will help right. retain as well. Interesting. A lot of people get dizzy and just, you know, bad. So yeah. having optimal salt intake yeah. from those three sources. Yeah, maybe just add more like really two, three important. grams of salt per day okay. of sodium. And then, and also another thing is exogenous ketones. Okay. Exogenous ketones is basically just ketones that you intake. You right. Do. There's a different form, powder form, water form. There's this new one called um, ketone ester. So there's ketone salt, ketone salt, and ketone ester. But basically, ketone ester is much more efficient. I see. I see a big difference when I take it, just as pre-workout now. Okay. I don't need it, but it gives me a boost of energy. Right. Yeah. So you literally take ketones as a pre-workout? Yeah, and then if you do blood tests, your ketones Wow. Increase. But then, it's still like a very new, a new supplement, so I guess it's fine if you're adapted, yeah. but there's not much study if you're like eating carbs and just, you just, you just take, take that. it. I yeah, don't think yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's good for that. So what does an average day of dieting or, or eating, I should say, look like for you? I mean, what type, what would be like, uh, I mean, do you have breakfast, no? Yeah, I don't normally eat breakfast. Okay. Because I think I read, I, I feel this as well, because if I don't eat breakfast, then I don't feel I don't have cravings throughout the day because my morning is the time that I am the most productive so I would just work from 8, 9 to like noon or yep. 1 then I would like, have my first meal but normally I would also work out at let's say 11 or noon so I would just work have a coffee, maybe have a coffee, maybe not work, and then work out at noon. Train and at then, noon? Yeah, train at noon and then have my first meal. And what does what, your first meal consist of? Just an average meal? Average meal, but I try not to have carbs, so we have some meat. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, try not to be processed. Yeah. Just protein? Just yeah. pure meat? And so, any like vegetables or um, any like other fats like avocado or anything like that? Not really. I try to have the fat from the meat. Okay. And I try to have organ meat for the vitamins, for the micro Like liver and things like that? I used to drink my veggie shake every morning. Okay. But I stopped this year and I'm not sure if it's, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad. Mm. Um, because for 10 years, I would drink my green veggie shake and then I would do my blood tests for micronutrients and I would see, I would still see vitamin deficiencies. Okay. And I'm not sure if mm. it's beneficial. Could, could some of that be from like just how you're like breaking down the food in your mouth and as opposed to just blending it and then like eating it, you know, yeah. like not actually chewing it and like breaking it down properly? Yeah. Could it be from that, do you think? I, You're not sure? I'm not sure. Mm, but okay. then I also don't, I don't really enjoy eating veggies that much. Right. So. 
and then with the carnivore like so you'd have that that right. initial protein and then what would your next your next meal be after that around six or seven okay and what would what would you have there same type of thing same thing and sometimes i would add if i want carbs i would add rice okay because i feel like at night if i have carbs it will get me to sleep easier right. yeah if i eat carbs during the day then i normally feel a little bit drowsy okay and what about from like a vitamin perspective i mean like so that's by that's where you eat the liver and stuff like that i mean yeah like is there anything else that you feel like you'd be missing out just by limiting yourself to um so like just different parts of the intestine the liver the heart the bone marrow the bone bone broth wow um just all of that and so far i feel feel good i haven't i was doing more blood tests and then all the deficiencies is gone wow and then sometimes i would go get sun for vitamin d right because most of the time i i had deficiencies as well right and i i believe that most people have deficiencies yeah so for vitamin d vitamin d yeah so yeah i used to take a lot of vitamins but now i just feel like a lot is marketing so i'm not sure what to believe so right. i'm still like in that process of testing out process of elimination yeah okay house the last thing i wanted to ask man is just um well, last thing i wanted to say is there any like shout outs or anything like that you want to make um the reason why i'm saying this is because we've got about three minutes before oh yeah, yeah, yeah. this turns off <laughs> so basically i mean if you want to know more about ketosis then i learned a lot from many people but like what i mentioned um Peter Atia Dom Peter Atia yeah Dom Tedestino yeah um that a few more doctors that you know like that has good information um I think like Chan Baker and Paul Saladino podcast mm. but those are carnivores okay and Yeah. Right. So those are good places for those people are good to places, start. Those are good places, yeah. Okay. And awesome. I mean there's a lot of summarized content on Tim Ferriss's um what's his book Tools of Titan and the other book. Yeah, there's another book that basically summarizes this. Okay. From both Peter Atia and Don Delgado. Nice. So awesome. And if you guys want to check out House, uh he has a podcast. So it's called The House Hour, right? Yes. Yeah, so The House Hour. So if you guys want to uh see more of this uh lovely handsome gentleman over here, you guys can check him out on House Hour. Bro, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Thank really you. appreciate it. It's yes. been an honor. Thanks so much, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for listening to my My man. No worries. <laughs> All good. See you guys too. Bye. Hey guys, Steve here. If you like the content, please don't forget to press like and subscribe to stay up to date with the most recent episodes. I'll see you guys on the next one.